Hi, I'm Aaron Sarovsky. And I'm Austin Shaw. This is Between the Keyframes. What's up? Hi, <laughs> Austin. It's good to see you. Nice to see you too. So this episode, we're going to talk about all of the things we make. Uh, I think the purpose of this episode is to really kind of give a kid a tool or somebody looking to change their career to show their partner or their parents like, hey, these are, this is what I want to go into. This is all the stuff out there that I can potentially do with a career in motion design. Right on. And um, to get people jazzed about it, I think sometimes we get so in our own lane, like I make this, so I'm focused on this, but there's a whole other category, especially if you're looking to pivot within the industry that you can think about after this episode of talking right. about all the things we make. Broad um, stroke. Yeah, broad strokes. I think in doing prep for this episode, it really made me re-fall in love with the field, you know? Like That's awesome. Looking at all this amazing work. I'm sure that, that somebody is not represented. Some studio or some person did some awesome iconic thing that we don't have in here. Um, that's real. It's not the each each of these like you Austin. You say this all the time. Each of these things could be an episode. Right. So right. Yeah. This is not meant to be a comprehensive or exhaustive list. So much as just we're touching on the categories. Yeah, it's more just a top line. Um, so with that, let's dive into all of the things we make. Let's all start the things. with yeah. Let's start with titles. Why don't all you right. give us a, a a synopsis of what a title is? Yeah. Titles. So titles, right? Like what what's the purpose? Um, it's kind of a threshold device. It's something to set the stage. So if it's a film title, it's setting the mm -hmm. stage for what that film's about. If it's a TV title or some kind of an event, um, it brings you in. It puts you into the mood. It's a mood setter. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there are lots of different kinds of title sequences. There's film titles. Um, I just judged this out South by Southwest, um, you know, award show for main titles. And I was very impressed by Birds of Prey. I believe Shine did that. And I just like really love that. Nice. How about how about the Winter Soldier Captain America oh. titles that you all did, right? Yeah, um, I mean, iconic. Iconic. <laughs> Um, dare I then, say iconic? Dare I say iconic <laughs> at this point? No. So also, but speaking of like Psycho, Saul Bass. That's right. I mean, right, right. And that was one of the references for Winter Soldier, right? Mm -hmm. right well, on. I mean, Saul Bass in general, I yeah, think is a yeah. big, the oversimplification and yeah. Right. And bringing it back to some of the classics, uh, Maurice Binder. Right, the the James Bond, Doctor No, getting that whole kind of that uh, franchise kicked off. Kicked off, yeah, and you know, it's still in that genre, that time period anyway. Um, Pablo Ferrera is a big reference. Ferro, to Pablo Ferro, just Ferro. Pablo Ferro. 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 I'm from Long Island, and it's really coming out. Ferro. 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 Well, I love him. <laughs> However, you say his name, I love him so much. Um, and that Thomas Crown is like my favorite piece. I just think it was like a really beautiful way of showing a spy thriller. Nice. It wasn't nice. spy. But it was like a thriller, like trying to figure it out, piecing things together. Yeah. Um, still referenced is Catch Me If You Can. Right. Catch Me If You Can, which was another one of those that was uh, kind of an homage of the of the classics mm -hmm. of the Saul Bass. And what about uh, everybody's everybody's favorite Seven. Seven. Right, seven That's shown cool in every part. every motion design uh, film title class, right? And this was this was just a project that um, really helped kind of kick off the the renaissance or the resurgence yeah. of film titles, and uh, yeah. Okay, so outside of film titles, we have TV titles. Um, so many amazing tv titles and we'll start with one of mine that just came out well mine and Dwart and james gunn and a lot of people have ownership over this but peacemaker you know that is just creating waves through the social lexicon which is you know amazing to see for a main title nice um, another yeah. one that that you all did that uh, i enjoy and is getting a lot of love uh, especially this last couple of years research is community, right? Yeah. Super fun, super fun titles. 
super fun. Both of them are like kind of rooted in comedies, actually. So that's kind of cool and lovely because usually like things are very main titles for shows that I seem more relevant <laughs> or right. more artful are, you know, like True Detective, where it's very emotional, dramatic kind of show and you can really let things play out a little bit more. Yeah. That was one too that I found was um, another one I show a lot to students and mm. for a time really kind of set a trend and bought that double exposure kind of mat style and, and really influenced the, you know, across industries too, seeing commercials done in that same oh kind of style referenced all the time. Referenced all the time. Yeah. yeah. You know, one that like people didn't really talk too much about maybe because of where it was placed in the show was Queen's Gambit. I thought that was a really fun title sequence. It was at the end of the last episode and it had all, it was like the full credit list, not just a main title credit list. And I just thought that was really beautiful. I just wish it would have been like on every episode. Um, right, right. How about I a classic? I wanted to mention it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was going to, I was going to jump up, jump ahead to a classic, yeah. uh, the Brady Bunch. I mean, we have Brady Bunch, you Golden the, Girls, you know, the, Friends. The sound, right? Yeah, the sound, the song. It really yeah. brought you to the dinner table for, I remember Family Ties. All of those had these classic main titles, even Night Court. Right, Cheers. <laughs> like they were, Cheers, super iconic. Exactly. Like, so that those kind of set the tone for those shows, you know, and those were more comedic, comedic sitcom -y ones, but... You know, bringing it back to a more modern um, touch was the morning show that came out of Elastic. I mean, Elastic, you can't talk about TV main titles and not talk about Elastic. So the morning right. show I thought was a really cool and it was kind of out of their traditional lane. Of, right, right. It was more about, playful and fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, how about Game of Thrones? It's can't another talk one. About Elastic. Right, right. And, you know, also uh, one of my favorite title sequences of all time that really kind of brought me. Besides Six Feet Under, which is amazing, and, you know, Digital Kitchen, Danny Yon, you know, it kind of did for titles, like what you said Seven did for films, for TV titles, what Seven yep. did for film. But the last one to talk about is Carnival for me, because Carnival, I, I was like, wow, that is kind of what we're experimenting with in, with motion design and kind of bringing that into into the television genre. Cause even at that time, six feet under, that was still just live action. Just, right. <laughs> right. Know? I know, no, for me, Carnival was one of those I remember seeing and, and I remember seeing the after effects camera work. It was one of the first that I thought really yeah. did a, just an amazing job of transitioning between graphics and illustrations to archival footage. Um, that made a real yeah. impression on me. Yeah. I actually wonder how that was made because now you would totally do that in After Effects or cinema even, but I think back then it might've been done in the flame. Yeah. I'm not know. sure. Anyway, let's it doesn't let's matter. Ask. Let's ask, uh, let's okay, inquire. We'll ask. We're gonna yeah. find out. <laughs> okay, so, so along the TV title kind of deal is um, title cards. You know, we have the whole title card thing. And I just absolutely love the Killing Eve title card. Mm. Amazing. Yeah, with the uh, the drip, the like the blood drip coming to and Ooh. different places, right? And the different yeah. colors. Yep. Yeah, and you even have like um, people talk a lot about the one from Ozark because yes. it's really cool looking and it says something about the show. It's pretty neat. You get the four little graphics that are like little hints. I'm always looking yeah. for them. Yep. Super cool. So also, you would think that would be it when it comes to title sequences, but it's not it. It's not. Um, that's not have, it. <laughs> it's not it. That's not all. Um, you also have like events, events like Oscars and Emmys and things like that. Other right. kind of award you know, shows. Award shows. Um, so and even like if you have a big brand event, sometimes they'll have like a, an opening for that. But yeah, the Oscars is a big one that we talk about in the industry. And Ooh. I really love this one from Pentagram. You know, the film Independent Spirit Awards. It's just very tactile and cool. <laughs> I got another one. I mean, how about some of those like MTV Music Awards, right? Um, yeah. Year after year, they do some really fun, cool uh, treatments. Yeah. And this kind of gets into, you know, branding because those are seem to be like extrapolated into full on kits. But, you know, they do put a big effort into the openings as well. 
Um, and then a new thing that's not really that new, but it's new to us because it didn't exist when we started, are these conference titles, which that's are true. just an opportunity to create art, typically, because they're unsupervised and you can kind of do whatever you want when you're given them. Yeah, it's like an opportunity for designer or studio to really flex, uh, do something yeah. uh, experimental or like you say, like something that maybe was a pitch that didn't make it, but you want, you know, a cool idea that you want to see yeah. executed. Yeah. The ones that I like want to pull, call out are like this one uh, for, what is it, Playground or Playgrounds by The Panics. I, you know, it really made me interested in who these people are. So that's really cool. It was a real fun solution. Yeah. Right on. And then we've got uh, the semi-permanent, right? They've done yeah. uh, just year after year, really cool titles. Yeah. And I'm a huge fan of these ones by Joyce Ho. She's like, you know, all hail. She's awesome. And you can't talk about um, conference titles without mentioning FITC. Ash Thorpe, he's the man. He did uh, such a great job on these titles. Right on. Okay, that's it for titles that we have. If you think of more titles, please let us know any kind of other categories that titles exist. Okay, so next up is commercials. Things for advertising purposes. Now, commercials are typically, we're, I think we're looking more at broadcast spots, but like now it's pre-roll. There's all these other places where commercials kind of play. Um so yeah, so television commercials. Okay, like what's the first one that comes to your mind for a television commercial? Well, there's the that really cool campaign, Man vs. Machine, the Air Max, Nike Air yeah. Max. And and they do that kind of like year after year. So it's yeah. it gets um, a little bit of a serial um, vibe to it, but they're just awesome, super fun, kind of Rube Goldberg-esque, but really cool 3D stylized. Yeah. yeah, just really kinetic, cool, and you really feel the air. <laughs> feels like okay so uh, one of my favorite commercials and it's a little bit maybe dated already but i love that piece for the for kraken that block and tackle did i just think that right is on. so cool it's like an illustrated style but brought to life in this three-dimensional way i think it's really cool right on well let's get a little, little more historic one of the early influences for me was the bombay sapphire that psyop did with the soup like just gorgeous design illustrations nice That's camera cool. work uh perspective changes that were mm -hmm. really pleasantly surprising uh that that stands out for me as like one of my all-time favorites you know i just saw the other day on tv a new um airpod commercial and I loved it, but it all, it took me way back to the early nuts, so to say, <laughs> for the original iPod commercials, you know? So you had like this total reinvention of, you know, the spot. I just think that that's really super cool. Right. Well, I remember seeing those commercials and the, the just the advertising all around, you know, you'd walk around New York City and just massive billboards and you see it on TV. Yeah, and oh, that, uh, yeah that iPod yeah. stuff was everywhere. Everywhere. But, you know, and it's cool. And I like when I when I reference that with students and like, OK, and then we're going to go look at these old school, you know, James Bond film titles. Right. And see the reference of the silhouettes. And then we're going to go and we're going to look at like Len Lai, who is an experimental filmmaker who was doing really cool things with silhouettes back in like, I think the 30s 1930s yeah. so it's cool. it's pretty cool to trace the uh the references the okay uh another cool spot that you know when i was looking up the <laughs> reference for the bob by sapphire what i stumbled across was this uh piece by golden wolf um the johnny walker piece i just thought that was a really beautiful it was illustrated but it wasn't like just cell animation it was just a really stunning piece you know it right was on. Really cool. Yeah. One more, one more studio I really like who does awesome commercial work is uh, Not Real, and oh. they do just cool branding and and it they take it in this kind of multi platform, um, just kind of fresh, strong design yeah. in motion. Yeah. Yeah, I like that piece that you shared with me for Rad Beverage. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> it was so. Rad. No, but I just like the design was really <laughs> strong. The color was really yeah. playful. It reminds me of what was going on with Bubbly or remember that stuff we did at Superfad, like for Fanta. It was just so colorful and fun, you know? Nice. 
Yeah. 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 Okay. Awesome. So we're back. We're going to talk about network promos next. And and network promos and network branding, that was really one of the areas that I got my start. Um, In addition to doing TV commercials, uh, lots of work for whether it was network branding, uh, rebrands, network launches, packaging and and certainly promos and it's it's been a mainstay uh of motion design for i guess the last two decades yeah i think the reason that these networks have leaned on motion designers is because you can churn them out pretty quick and pretty cheap and at a higher production value and i think they kind of locked into that thinking very early on so some of like fx does some kick-ass promos i think if you think about the work they did with the simpsons and, you know, The Simpsons have been on a few networks, so there's there's definitely a few packages out there for The Simpsons that have knocked me on my butt that I love so much. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Awesome. How about how about another FX, uh, American Horror Story? American right. Horror Story. Danny Yunt has done a couple packages for them that have been super inspiring. Super inspiring to look at. Really beautiful production. Um, one thing to talk about, I think, with social media and, and this idea of television, right, is that television has become somewhat decentralized. Like mm-hmm. the television that you and I came in working on where it was like we were doing SD, then we were doing HD and everything had to be HD. But now it's it's everywhere. And in some yeah. ways it's like maybe, you know, the bulk of the work that I used to do in a lot of network branding is has been um, – distributed to social mobile platforms, right? And in a way it's like, we got TV in our pockets, we got TV everywhere we go now. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of work there for, for social media and, and a lot of it is multi-platform. So um, mm. any any of these campaigns that, that come out and stand, um, come to mind for you or stand out? Well, I mean, I just love this recent work for Burger King. <laughs> They've done a lot of really fun stuff that really works on social because it's got a lot of legs in a bunch of different directions and a couple different styles, but it still seems to be kind of pinned together um, with, you know, messaging and, and the visual direction. So I, I like that stuff. But I think I think we should talk about some of your work because you do a ton of this, like a ton of this as a freelancer and you work direct with the brands, which I think people don't realize. I think, you know, a lot of our clients are advertising agencies, but more and more brands are hip to what's going on and they're just going directly to freelancers or building in-house teams. So that's a whole other avenue for exploration right. if you're looking for work. Right on. Well, I've had, I have a long, long history with Ralph Lauren, uh, probably going on about 14 years now of doing projects direct with them. And mm-hmm. a lot of this has shifted. I did a lot of in store uh, in the beginning, but a lot mm-hmm. of this has become now social, mobile. Um, did a campaign for the Pink Pony campaign, which was really fun, yeah. where we did the word love in all these different languages, and they wanted Beautiful. this seamless morph. And, and that went across like social, website, they had at a home, uh, yeah. done stuff for Spotify, another one that was, uh, and it's interesting because it's this, this um, combination of both the little screen, right? Like the little phone yeah. screen and then these giant massive billboards, like these Times Square stuff that I did for uh, Pharrell Williams um, and a release of a new song. That was really cool. And then mm-hmm. um, another client I do a lot of stuff with is Anthropology, and, mm-hmm. and talk about this idea of like short form storytelling or um, glance media is like where you're in the feed and you're scrolling and, and you only have like snackable, right? Like it's, you only have a couple seconds. So some yeah. of these really eye catching, fun, quick, and, and I like it. I like a lot of these, yeah. um, you know, high, high design, fun design, and you can kind of do a lot in a very short amount of time. Well, it's like, imagine yeah. going through a catalog. <laughs> But it's just like one product or a set of products that are all like in the same thing. And you're you're just calling attention to it right away with the design and the animation. So right. I, I think like Glance Media is like a really lovely way to put it and snackable because it's just like, hey, here's these new pair of shoes. Like, right. It's Capture your attention feed. quickly. Yeah. Yep. 
for yeah. a reason. It's here in your feed for a reason. You're probably going to like this and want to learn more or shop now or something like that. So, so more and more people are going to start selling directly on these platforms and they're going to need more and more of that living catalog type stuff. So music videos, uh, rich history, of course, like MTV, right? Like all of that. Um, Lots of lots of inspiration from there. Um, I actually one of my uh, earliest internships was at RCA Records, and I I worked with the video commissioner, and this was like pre Napster, right? <laughs> pre so there Napster. was actually like, yeah, I mean it was like they had a lot of clout, like big budgets, yeah. um, and and lots of experimentation, directors writing treatments, uh, really really cool stuff. So what are some of your what's your uh, your favorite All right, I'll go music video. through my list of golden oldies. Cool. <laughs> I got to start with Aha, Take On Me. Like, I, I want to be the one that does a modern interpretation of that. Like, without question. <laughs> if it's somebody else, I'm going to be really disappointed. <laughs> um, but it's got to be the exact right thing, you know. So, so Aha, Take On Me. You know, they... The White Stripes had a bunch of really cool shit, and they obviously had a relationship with Gondry for um, for a long time. The Seven Nation Army with that so cool. Um, fell in love with a girl. They they just were like the shit, you know. Um, they might be giants. Had this super fun video called "Bastard Wants to Hit Me," and a friend showed that to me, and I was just like. It was like cell animation and motion design. It was like the coolest thing. And the song was so fun. I don't know. It was amazing. Yeah. Right on. Do you have any oldies? How about, yeah. Do you remember Gnarls Barkley? Yeah. Remember Crazy? The Rorschach. Um, the Rorschach. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember being at brand new school. I was freelance, permalance in there. And I remember when that came out and we were all just watching it. And it was just, yeah, that was very cool. Um Right on. Uh, another one that's kind of old that I really like is uh, PSYOP did this Converse uh, oh. for my drive through. Yeah, that was super cool with all the, I think they actually printed everything out and like cut them out. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was a, such a cool one. Um, another one, uh, getting a little more closer to date is... Uh, uh, Ariel Costa, blink my brain. Yeah. He did. He actually did a couple real cool. He did one for Green Day yeah. that was super cool, all collage. And he did another one for. He did the official video for Led Zeppelin, oh. um, for a Led Zeppelin song. Yeah, which is really neat. Um, and a much more contemporary one would be uh, something that Scholar recently did that I thought was really cool, um, where they were did a lot of artwork in Procreate. And using um, mocap, mocap to Very actually cool. map onto the talent. Really neat stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Want to jump right yeah, in? Yeah, let's jump Episodics. right into episodic, which is you know not something that motion designers typically talk about, but it is something, especially if you're more on the cell side of things or into something more, you know, longer format. You could land you could cross over into that territory so julia potts who's represented by hornet um does this summer camp island thing that we looked at and we're like oh my god she also does a bunch of commercial work there but yeah. this i remember i saw her speak at at f5 actually you spoke at the same conference too a bunch of years back in new york and and uh that was when i first got introduced to her work and i i thought it was just super cool yeah. um illustrator gone at an animator who's gone now to episodics and one thing i'll say too is that in, in my early days at curious pictures yeah. um i was working on the commercials and network branding and all that that side of things but they had a few in-house um productions they were doing a cartoon uh called the kids next door okay. which i think was a real popular cartoon um sheep in the big city so like like that was a part like you'd go down yeah. to another wing and there were all these long format like illust um, Folks, yeah. artists. Yeah. yeah so yeah. that reminds me a lot of like maybe the modern version of that is Awesome Inc. This amazing company based in Atlanta, I believe. And they do a bunch of right. stuff for Adult Swim, like Aqua, Aqua Teen yeah. Hunger Force and Squib Squibbillies. <laughs> Just some crazy Squibbillies, fun shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's like 
<laughs> not safe for totally. four-year-olds, but like awesome totally. stuff, you know? And, you know, when you look at movies like uh, Spider-Man into Spider-Verse, just watching a trailer for that is like a motion graphics delight. Now, when you get into like film work like that or even TV work like this, there is a pipeline. And so, you know, like when you're at Pixar doing a film there, which also could be considered episodic or long format, um, you know, sometimes you'll get pinned into a specific thing. Like, are you doing storyboards? Are you kind of doing look dev? Are you doing uh, rigging animation? You know, it gets real granular and specific at times. You're not, motion design tends to be more like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> jack of all trades, generalist speaking. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. But episodic is is alive and well and long format is alive and well and it's only getting bigger and with cartoons being not just for children anymore uh it and kind of kind of pushing it even in shoot i've been watching uh vox machina which is dungeons and dragons um i'm trying i think it was critical role they had a super successful podcast oh, wow. they did a kickstarter like record setting amount of money raised to produce these episodes of their uh dungeons and dragons campaigns and they're definitely not for kids that's awesome that's really cool yeah. all right next up we're going to talk about branding motion branding and lots of avenues to do we've got traditional network branding yeah. we've got uh streaming services all kinds of things and and there's just a tremendous amount of opportunity so um thinking traditionally any anything stand out for you yeah you know the stuff they do in europe is i don't know always maybe a little bit more inspiring <laughs> just they have a little bit more bandwidth to do artistic stuff and i think you know man versus machine they've done a bunch of really cool rebrands but the one that comes to mind for me is that more for you know, um, for Channel 4. Just really cool flipping. It was just like, my microphone fell down. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Really cool flipping. Yeah, just like as I knock over the microphone. <laughs> just like that. You know, there's something I really like early on, and I think even in grad school that I noticed, is that like Europe and Asia, like they tend to be le more abstract and yeah. less concerned or worried that the audience isn't going to get it, right? Totally. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the more modern, uh, Trollback, right? Trollback yes. does like super cool branding. The, they just redid ABC, mm -hmm. uh, worked with Stephen Kelleher, super talented graphic designer who I think worked on the logo and just an awesome uh, rebrand there. Super cool stuff. And then, you, you yeah. know, along with regular networks, you have streaming services, which I don't know why we just, just this microphone is super fucked right now. My kid was just in here playing around with it, so... I think she stole the little pads. <laughs> she like pocketed nice. them. She's a total little thief. Um, no, but so streaming services, uh, Gretel did this piece for Netflix that was, I remember when I saw it, I was like, wow, that's really cool. Really, really cool. Right. Just a neat system. And how about another one uh, Buck did for Hulu? Yeah. Right? Really contemporary illustrations yeah. combined with stylized 3D. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Then you have in-app branding. So like <laughs> in the phone. Yeah. But it's all moving now. So. That's right. Right. Here's another another Buck one that they did for Facebook, the Allegria. Like basically I... I a system, an identity kind of image softening system mm -hmm. that just uh, very illustrative, um, all kinds of usages, and really inspired uh, a lot of other companies Completely. and brands to do the same. Right, Absolutely. right. Another. Um, Speaking of Stephen Kelleher, he did this. Uh, he led this messenger system uh, rebrand of all the iconography there with really cool stylized three D. Um, you know, lots of usage spread across uh, millions of 
devices. Yeah, and just right. the use. It's like you build a system so that it can be used in any way that they can possibly think of. Right. Uh, light mode, dark mode, <laughs> just like go gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous stuff. Flat, 3D, all the things. But I'm thinking also about the stuff that Tendril did for Microsoft. They kind of synopsize it in this cool like little film that they put together. But you have to imagine that had like a gajillion deliverables. <laughs> Right, right. Really beautiful. What about motion as part of like the identity system? Mm, yeah, well, Viceland also, since I'm on like a Gretel kick here, Viceland, the work that Gretel did for them is just so cool. It's like in, it's like in platform, it's TV, it's broadcast. It's like every, it's all the things, you know, so. Cool. What about this block and tackle Google project? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to not mention Google when you talk about branding. So because they've just done a, such a good job of it and they've kind of, you know, them and Facebook both have kind of brought that like living <laughs> kind of iconography into like cemented into the lexicon. So same thing with these, you know, kind of clip arty illustrations, like super artfully rendered. Right. Right. And then we've also got award show packages. Mm -hmm. Any of those stand out to you? Yeah, well, you know, MTV, like all the different things that they do from the, you know, the music videos, the VMAs, all that stuff. Uh, there's a studio Morose, I think it is. I don't know. They do a lot for MTV. So I, I really like a bunch of the stuff that they do. Yeah. Nice. And of course, uh, when we're talking about branding, we're talking about identity marks and logos, logos. right? So logo animations. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, to me, like the first one that I can remember like ever seeing where it really cemented that this is a thing forever was that MTV Moon Man with the flag in the ground. They even had like a launch video that actually had like a rocket launching and the whole thing. And literally... Anytime you look at a commercial, anytime you look at anything, it has some branding and identity. If it's in social now, it's usually up front. So it's like a bump in or something like that. Um, so whatever content there is, there's a bookend <laughs> with a logo kind of experience that is motion right. and branded. So, so right. yeah. And now with like social, it's interesting. I've seen like the, the shift. Sometimes it starts. Sometimes you open yeah. with it, right? Um, and something I, I've done for a long time in my uh, motion branding class, my more advanced motion class, is a series of logo animations right at the start of the class and, and have the students um, just jump in there, short form, three to five seconds, and and really to, to have these kinds of low stakes, but um, where they can really experiment, but fast. I make them do a, a lot of work in a short amount of time and I make decisions and keep them really focused on just animate the mark, right? Deconstruct it and bring it to life, but make sure it feels on brand. And it's it's a really good exercise because a lot of portfolio, potentially portfolio, or, or just piece moments that can work in a, in a demo reel come out of that. And it's uh, it shows that they they can kind of be ready to, to work on, yeah. a, on a production, production right away, right? Yeah. Yep. Well, I think the thing about that that's wonderful is like for every logo you see animated like that's one of like 700 versions <laughs> that you've put forth so the work is mostly disposable until like all the stars align and there's that one that cuts through right and then that probably gets frame fucked to death you know and it usually starts out more complicated and gets simpler and simpler and simpler because that's how it goes with logo animations, just actually in working. You know, they just work better if they're simpler. So right. I love that you do that as an exercise with your students because, you know, doing like a, a three second thing or a two second thing, it's OK that work is disposable when you're working that quickly on things as opposed to like when they try and do like a five minute film. And you're like, dude, right. you can't have that in your portfolio anymore. It's out of date. And they're like, but I spent a year on it. And it's like, it's it's over. You shouldn't have spent a year on a little piece for your portfolio when you were a sophomore. <laughs> yeah. You know. All right. Thanks for joining us for this first part of all the things we make. Yeah, we were hoping we could squeeze it into one episode, but we make a lot of things. <laughs> so, so many things. Many things. Just keep <laughs> 
We just keep making them. Yeah. Can't stop. And it's only going to become more because, as we know, graphic design should include motion design as, like, an expertise. So literally everything should be touched by a motion designer. So right. here we go. More next week. In two weeks. Cool. Bye, Austin. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you.